The ARRL has published reviews of antenna tuners. Should we take what they say seriously? A well-known antenna engineer who's also a ham, Tom Roch, hope I pronounced his name right, W-H-J-I, says this about QST magazine reviews of antenna tuners. Quote, they are incorrect, end of quote. And here's why. The ARRL reviewers in measuring tuner efficiency used this. An MFJ 259 antenna analyzer. Now, I'm sure that's a fine piece of gear for your typical ham to use at home. I have a Rig Expert brand analyzer, and I wonder how we ever got on the air without those things. But here's what uh, Roch says about using an MFJ antenna analyzer to review tuner efficiency. He says this, the 259 is not capable of the resolution required for this type of test. It is not a lab type instrument. I don't know about you, but that seems pretty obvious to me. I don't know why the editors of QST Magazine thought that was okay. Well, Tom says the theory was correct. The intentions were good. The instrument was just used far beyond its design limitations. He says a proper instrument for these kinds of measurements would cost tens of thousands of dollars, not $300. But being an antenna engineer, Tom had the right gear, HP impedance analyzer, Wiltron RF analyzer, and Harris and HP multi-channel vector voltmeters. How much does stuff like that cost? Well, let's just say that if you need that kind of gear, you can rent it. So what does that tell you? Well, anyway, uh, he explains why precise measurements make a big difference in measuring efficiency of antenna tuners. Now, for example, let's say a tuner is 100% efficient measuring an SWR of 2. But your MFJ antenna analyzer says the SWR is 1.8. Well, that sounds pretty close, but that would indicate a loss of over 14% at 2 to 1 when the loss is actually zero. So, here's what he did. He took five MFJ 989C tuners and used his lab-grade equipment to measure efficiency. On the worst band for tuner loss, 160 meters at 100 watts, the efficiency was 89.3%, and all five tuners were within 1% of each other. So that's pretty good, especially since MFJ tuners are considered, well, budget tuners. I've owned a few, and some I had to fix before using them. Bad solder joints, loose hardware rattling around. One was even wired incorrectly. But once you fix them, they got the job done. And who knows, you might even get one that works correctly right out of the box. You know, I once owned an MFJ loop antenna that worked really well, but I had to fix that too. The tuning capacitor was not aligned correctly. And I think there was a loose bolt or screw rattling around in there. I never did figure out where it went, but once I got that thing adjusted, it worked great. Now, Tom tells another story, which is actually kind of funny. Tom designed the Ameritron AL1200 1.5K power amp. QST, in doing a review, called him and said the amplifier had 2,900 plate volts under load 
when the manual said it should be 3,300 volts. But Tom responded, logically, maybe your line voltage is low? Well, ARRL guy said, oh no, that can't be. We have a very expensive uh, line voltage regulator. So they published the review saying the plate voltage was below spec. Then they took the amp to W1AW and guess what? The plate voltage was 3,300 volts. Tom says they wanted him to write a correction for their review. And he said, no, it's your mistake. You fix it. Now back to the myth that antenna tuners waste great amounts of power. Hey, on 160 meters, uh, efficiency was only 89% for that MFJ tuner. Well, guess what? Everything in your shack is less than 100% efficient, including you. Your coax line out to the antenna could be 89% efficient, even with an SWR of one. And certainly the benefits of using an antenna tuner far outweigh any loss, like being able to use one simple wire antenna on multiple bands. And here's a tip. Most of the loss in tuners occurs in the coil. So use as small inductance as possible when adjusting your transmatch or antenna tuner. Consider subscribing to this channel and 73.